Good evening and welcome to the October 25th meeting of the Falmouth Conservation Commission. Section 40 of Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023 allows for the continuation of remote meetings. As such, this meeting is being held virtually via Zoom video conference and is also being broadcast on cable channel 15 and streamed online by FCTV. As this meeting is being recorded by Zoom and broadcast by FCTV, please be cognizant of what you say, how you say it, and what can be seen and heard in your background. We're missing two commissioners. However, we have a quorum, so we're moving forward. I remind you guys for commenting, I'll call on each of you at the appropriate time, and that all votes have to be done by roll call. So when I call your name, please state your name and your vote even if you've made the motion or the second. To our public participants, at any time during this meeting, you may enter any comments or questions via the chat function. At the appropriate time, they will be read into the record. If you'd like to participate in a specific hearing, let us know via the chat function. Then at the appropriate time, I will call for public comment. When you are selected, you will be moved into the hearing as a participant. As such, you must have your video enabled, be succinct, and respectful of others. Public comments will be limited to three minutes each. For RDAs, under a request for determination of applicability, the applicant is asking the Commission to determine if the provisions of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and or the Falmouth Wetlands Bylaw apply to their proposed project. A negative determination is that the provisions of the Act and or the bylaw do not apply. Therefore, the project may proceed as proposed. However, a positive determination means that the provisions of the Act and or the bylaw do in fact apply or that they need further scrutiny. So uh, therefore, the project would could possibly require a notice of intent application. So as an applicant, you kind of want to hear a negative determination. Tonight, for the benefit of anyone waiting for a particular hearing and so that you're not waiting unnecessarily, the following items are expected to be continued. Number 23 and number 24, Debbie Lane. Number 120, 125, 130, Old Dock Road. 22, Millfield Street. And zero, or otherwise known as 116, Walk Point Highway. Those are all expected to be continued. So with that, we'll get right into request for continuance. First up, request for continuance for determination of applicability. First up, Frederick and Shirley Weedman, 23 Debbie Lane, East Falmouth, Mass. Full permission to pump dry, fill, and abandon the existing cesspools and to install a new Title V sewage disposal system. Ms. Bergeron. The applicant has requested a continuance until November 8th. Heard so move. Bill Bryan, second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second to continue this until November 8th. Questions or comments? All right, we're voting on the continuance. Betsy? Bloodfelter, aye. Courtney? Heard, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin? O'Brien, aye. Steve? That and I. It is unanimous. We have continued this until November, yes, November 8th. Next up, I'm a broken record. Frederick and Shirley Weedman, 24, Debbie Lane, East Falmouth, Mass. For permission to pump, dry, fill, and abandon mm -hmm. the existing cesspool and to install a new Title V sewage disposal system. Ms. Bergeron. The applicant has requested a continuance until November 8th. Bird, so move. O'Brien, second. second. Ooh. I'll, I'll let him have it. A little competition. All right. We have a motion and a second to continue this hearing or this request until November 8th. Betsy. Blackfelter, aye. Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Steve. Ben, aye. It is unanimous. We have continued this until November 8th. Next up, 
Ryko and Brian Henricks, 120, 125, and 130 Old Dock Road, Falmouth, Mass., for permission to Vista Prune, according to FWR 10.18, 10B, Ms. Bergeron. The applicant has requested a continuance until November 29th. Heard, so move. Patent second. All right, we have a motion and a second to continue this request until November 29th. Questions or comments? All right, we're voting on the continuance, Betsy. Glad well, Felter I. Courtney. <clears throat> Bird I. Matthews I. Kevin. O'Brien I. Steve. Ben I. It is unanimous. We have continued this until November 29th. Next up is a requ our request for continuance under a notice of intent. First request is Thomas and Eliz Elizabeth She. The Quinella Group, LLC, 22 Millfield Street, Woods Hole, Mass, for permission to install a dock on Eel Pond. Jen? Yes, Mr. Chairman, the applicant's requesting a continuance until November 29th. Uh, Bird Felter well, still moved. Bird second. Uh, I have a question as to why. They're meeting with the Harbor Master. Um, there's a little bit of um uh, a butter concern down there so it's kind of a really tight area right. so that's working with greg frazier on a redesign okay thank you all right any other questions or comments all right we're voting on the con to continue this hearing until uh -huh. november 29th betsy glad felt or i courtney bird i matthews i kevin well, brian i Steve. Pat and I. It is unanimous. We have continued this hearing until November 29th. Next request is Stephen Leaf, zero, Walkoid Highway, map and parcel ID number 27-07-009-000, Falmouth, Mass., for permission to construct a single-family dwelling on an undeveloped lot. Jen? Yes, Mr. Chairman, the applicant is requesting a continuance until November 1st. And the reason, Courtney, is they dropped the plans off last Friday, I believe. So they weren't in for a week in advance. Good move. I approve. So move, Gladfelter. Third second. All right. Any other questions or comments? No. All right. Thank you. My pleasure. We're voting on the continuance to 11-1. Betsy. I felt a rye. Courtney. Third eye. Matthews I. Kevin. O'Brien I. Steve. Ben I. It is unanimous. We have continued this hearing until November 1st. Next up are requests for determination of applicability. George and Wendy Bigelow. Five Yacht Club Road, Falmouth, Mass. For permission to remove part of the existing deck, construct an addition to the garage and connect this addition to the existing sewage disposal system. Ms. Bergeron. Staff recommends a negative two under the state and bylaw. Resource area boundaries are not confirmed, and this project is solely located in an AE flood zone. Thank you. Bird so moved. Ben, second. All right, we have a motion and a second to accept staff's recommendation. Questions or comments? All right, we're voting. Betsy. Glad Felter, aye. Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Steve. And aye. It is unanimous. We have accepted staff's recommendation. Next up, Town of Falmouth, Water Department, care of Michael Regahito. Zero West Falmouth Highway map 35-04-007A-000. And map 35-04-006A-000. Full permission to treat common reed, Phragmites cuminus using approved methods of control. Wow. 
Ms. Bergeron, don't you dare continue this. Staff recommends a negative three under the state and a negative two under the bylaw. Resource area boundaries are not confirmed. Heard so move. I'm curious to know what's how that's different from Second. what is it, Australia, sir? The other pragmatics? No, that's just the um, the Latin name. Oh, I thought it was Australiasis or something like that. It is. It could be a difference. It, it could. I can check for you, Court. I'm just it's, curious. It's pragmatics. Yeah, it's pragmatics. Mark the, wrote the that. Common, <laughs> the common read. The invasive pragmatics. They sometimes switch species names, Courtney, so it, it just could be an updated name. Mark put it in there. Yeah, okay. Thatch. <laughs> Pat and second. Thank you. All right, we have a motion and a second to accept staff's recommendation. Any other questions or comments? All right, we're voting to accept staff's recommendation. Betsy. Bud Filter, aye. Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Steve. Pat and aye. It is unanimous. We have accepted staff's recommendation. Next up, our continued request for determination of applicability. And one, two, three, they've all been previously continued. That brings us to requests for hearing under notice of intent. All hearings of the Falmouth Conservation Commission are held simultaneously under the authorities of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and the Falmouth Wetlands Bylaw. Although a single decision of the commission is issued, it represents a separate decision under each authority. Don't interrupt me, Courtney. As a reminder, public commenting is limited to three minutes. So I encourage you to stay within the purview of this board, which are the rules and regulations of the Wetlands Protection Act and the Falmouth Wetlands Bylaw and how they pertain to a particular application the chair reserves the right to stop any commenting that is disparaging or inconsequential to the hearing. Courtney? I just want to, it's perhaps due to my advanced age, did we miss um, Brian Hendricks determining no. or was it continued? Continued. continued? I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you. Just checking. Uh, first up. Timothy Peterson, 40 Associates Road Nominee Trust, 40 Associates Road, Falmouth, Mass. For permission to conduct invasive species removal and restoration. Jen? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I've promoted Nick Crawford and Lauren Taylor up from Crawford Land Management to present their project. Can you hear me? Nick, yes, we can, Nick. Hello, good evening everyone. Uh, Nick Crawford and Lauren Taylor from Crawford Land Management. Um, <clears throat> we're here tonight to present the project at uh, 40 Associates Road on Chappaquid Island. Um, I believe that you know this project, or not this particular project, but this property came before you um, previously for a dock application at one point. Um, and it came to the staff's attention that there had been pruning out there um, in the past and historically that may not have been, or that was not permitted. Um, so that dock application was withdrawn and the decision was made to proceed to alleviate any, any and hopefully all concerns, uh, related to the vegetation, uh, pruning and, and maintenance. Um, so, you know, it's, a it's a relatively, um, simple project as compared to what you guys typically see. It's approximately 5,800 square feet of predominantly invasive species consisting of bittersweet, vine honeysuckle, privet, and shrub honeysuckle. I'd say makes up at least 90 to 95% of it. Um, <clears throat> there were previous uh, mitigation um, and or restoration plantings in these areas and there's evidence of that. Um, and you can see some of that on the plan as existing colonies of beach plum and bayberry. Um, Excuse so, me, Nick, have you intended yep. to share your plan? Oh, sorry, yeah, I can definitely share screen. Sorry, I'm just not used to doing that. You're referencing it and it's yep. not in front of us. There you go, can you see that? No, I there yep. it is. Almost, all right, can you, uh, hold on, Mike. Uh, 
Sorry, I'm not used to sharing. <laughs> um, well, nonetheless, can you can you see it pretty well? Most of the plan. Most of it. Okay, is that better? There we go. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah, yes. perfect. Okay. Thank perfect. you, Nick. Um, so there are some, there are, you know, fairly significant existing colonies of beach plum and bayberry. Um, we did the, to the best of our ability, kind of dot those in and approximate the areas of them. Um, so, you know, all in all, what we're proposing to do is the removal of approximately, you know, 5,800 square feet of invasive species um, within the 50 foot buffer zone to the top of the coastal bank. Um, in its stead, native species are proposed for replanting approximately uh, five to six feet on center. And that's not including those areas that are already vegetated with natives. Um, in addition to that, we're proposing a, uh, a small two foot wide um, strip of wood chips to delineate between mown lawn and the area that would be predominantly shrubs, but start off more as meadow closer to the edge. So instead of having that meadow bleed into um, the lawn at some point, just untreated um, wood chips and some steel edging so that landscapers know where their area ends and where the restoration areas begin. Um, all in all, it proposes the restoration of um, 5,800 square feet um, with native species according to the plant schedule um, that you can see here, there is uh, 219 um, woody shrubs. Of those, only I know that th there was a comment about um, the rose and the sweet fern not being, you know, large woody shrubs, but that makes up uh, a small component of the 219, and most of those smaller woody species are within the proposed view corridor, which it was brought up that that was wider than 25 feet. And I believe Lauren sent back um, comments to the staff comments um, and it's 26 feet wide. So we can certainly revise that to reflect one foot smaller. Um, and I'm sure as you know, from our projects and other other companies' projects, obviously the purpose of the um, the roses and the sweet fern within that view corridor is to minimize pruning in the future, um, allow things to get to their full growth potential and you know limit, limit disturbance in the area in the future. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, that's kind of it in a nutshell. You know, I, I would anticipate that um, most of the species would be mechanically removed, uh, the areas virtually flat um, above the top of a stable revetment. And um, and yeah, I'm happy to, to answer any questions that anyone might have about how or, or what we're proposing to do here. Thanks, Nick. Lauren, do you have anything you'd like to add at this point? Um, I think it's in the staff report as well, but I would just add that there's two Eastern Red Cedar trees proposed and that's um, in place of two cedar trees that were removed at one point without permission. So that's why those trees are on the plan. Um, other than that, I think Nick just about covered anything. Excellent. Nick, you can stop sharing now. Thank you. All right. Stop share. There we go. Thanks. Jen. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, Nick, Lauren, unfortunately, we didn't receive an email addressing the staff's comments. So um, we just didn't get it. I just checked my email right then and gotcha. there. So, um, I'm not quite sure what was in that email. Um, first off, Nick, I think the nine sweet fern and the, uh, I mean, the, I'm sorry, the a 13 sweet fern and the nine Carolina rose that were mentioned in the staff report were outside of the view quarter. We totally understand why you're putting them in the view quarter as they are lower shrubs, mm -hmm. kind of maintaining almost like a self-maintained view corridor. Right. Uh, so those are the species that to the, why can't I find a north arrow, an arrow? It's to the east of the path. So those were the ones we were calling out to switch to the other species understood um i think there was some concern on our part 
We completely understand having that mulched edge on either side of the properties. It helps, you know, with the maintenance and not having invasives come in from the um, adjacent properties. But we were kind of confused why you had the mulch edge along the yard area or the lawn area. Mm -hmm. Kind of wanted that to see if that's shrub material now, we'd like to see that two feet remain shrub material. But I do like the idea of the steel edging to stop a mower. Okay. Um, You'll be fixing the view corridor with. Um, I think we had concerns with, and I, um, with, and I don't know if it was reflected in the staff report or not. With the placement of the eastern red cedar on the west side, it seems to be right up against a like a. What is that, Alyssa? A big stand of. I'm not sure if it's. It's just sort of an existing hedge of vegetation. Once that gets cut and this area becomes restored, I just feel like it, it should be shifted a little bit closer to the water. So when it gets older and grows more laterally, it's not growing into that, that. existing yeah. hedge. Okay. No. So that, um, and then there was another plan uh, note that we wanted revised the proposed view corridor to be maintained at a maximum uh maintain at five foot maximum height it should be five foot minimum height okay yeah um pretty straightforward we do want the because most of these um plantings are former mitigation plantings and they're not like restoration a lot of the a lot of the plantings out there were required for past projects we wanted to see that spacing tightened up a bit to reflect what the commission normally requires um so i think that'll be reflected in an order um but it would be nice if when you made those plan revisions you could make that note as well and i think uh that's all i have right now mr chairman thank you thank you Ms. bergeron thank you um in terms of the percent invaded, just so we can sort of calculate when the revisions come in, reflecting that tighter spacing, um, if you can give us that total, just so I can calculate if sort of the shrub count comes out the way we were expecting it to. Um, and then just going on about the maintenance pads, you can certainly, you know, have that mulched area in the front just sort of in addition to the existing planting area we don't want to lose that square footage that was previously required so you can add on that that mulch that wood chip just further landward from where the existing plant line is um just to note on the vista it looks like the only existing vegetation in there is just one stand of beech plum so i'm sure when you guys go in there you'll you'll bring that down to the five feet um, just going forward so the homeowners know, ideally these plants won't get taller than five feet, but if they ever do, and if they want to trim the beach plum again and it's outside the life of this permit, they will need to reapply for the vista. We'll have to go out there, um, but we understand that that's where the pruning will be and the rest will be let to grow. Um, in response to the existing stands of beach plum and bayberry, are you guys going to prune those in any way or are you going to just uh, work around them it'll we'll certainly work around them and leave you know leave them in their entirety to start and then on a case-by-case -case basis see what's kind of left once the invasives are removed if they're if it's one beach plum that's growing 18 feet to the right laying on the ground the whole way that's likely something that we're gonna you know cut back to you know a two to three foot uh stem and allow it to flush back out um if it's something that looks like it's going to be just fine and it's you know sort of compact and like one specimen already then that's certainly something that we just leave alone okay good to know thank you um i think my only other note just has to do with the property and not to do with this plan but to the commission there is still an out hall on the site so it would be good to consider putting in the special conditions to have that removed when you guys vote. Um, and what does what that refer to? I'm sorry. Um, an out hall is, I, I'm not the best person to explain it here, but it's a, a way to tie up a boat to shore. 
Um, when okay. the previous application came in where they were looking at the dock, that was one of our concerns to be addressed. Um, you guys aren't really involved in that, but it, it should be addressed on the property as a whole now that they're back before us. Um, it's just not permitted to be there. Uh, and when you, when you say the L, you're referring to like the rope that leads from somewhere in the water to shore? Correct. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you. I, I, have, you. One more, I have one more clarification. Nick, when you were talking about the mulched edge, you said something about a meadow? Well, I, once the invasive species are removed, the whole area is going to be seeded with you know, a native um, vegetative ground cover, which consists mostly of grasses. So until those shrubs are fully formed and, and, you know, encapsulate that, you know, eight by eight or five by five square foot area okay. um, shown on the plan, you know, the area is kind of going to be a little bit more grassy. And um, a lot of the times those grasses just kind of like spill over into the lawn. Um, so the purpose of the mulched or wood chipped area is so that you, we don't have to constantly kind of weed whack the edge that's falling okay. over. I would just want a clarification. Yep. You said meadow, and I was like, huh. And just one thing on the grasses, are, are these grasses going to take over? Like we've seen, unfortunately, on an, uh, some other projects. Um, or are these are these grasses really aggressive? So the I think you're referring to like mostly switchgrass yeah. and it becoming aggressive and, you know, four, five, six feet tall and out competing a lot of the shrubs. Right. That's certainly not the intention of this seed mix. Um, we do find that sometimes after restoration, uh, the initial restoration projects, that that switchgrass component is it's happened in projects in Falmouth, projects in East Ham, projects in Brewster that I can think of in particular, is that the switchgrass is kind of there waiting to come up. Um, in the seed bank. So it's certainly something that we can keep an eye on. And um, if that's the case, keep in check during the shrub establishment period and the life of the permit. Okay. Because I, I know in our in our seed mix, the switchgrass, I, be, I believe off the top of my head, makes up this very small percentage of the seed by weight. I think it's only 5%. Um, but, I, but I know exactly what you're talking about. Okay, that's just going to be a, a concern of ours going forward when uh, when we're seeing these types of projects. So, um, I mean, all in all, it's, you know, it's a, a, a great plan. We just want to see a few modifications to the plan and a few of the revi uh, notes revised. Um, but yeah, I'm all set, Mr. Chairman. All righty. Commissioner comments, Betsy. No questions or comments. Thank you. Courtney. If uh, switchgrass is potentially problematic, would it be better to plant something else? I mean, we can certainly eliminate it from the seed mix altogether because we mix it all ourselves. Um, it, can I make a clarification? So the seed mix Please. that we expect on the plan doesn't have any switchgrass in it. Oh. We've kind of revised our seed mix not to include that or fescues, which have been a little bit more aggressive. So the mix that we have now doesn't have any switchgrass in it. It just has little blue stems, sand drop seed, poverty oak grass, and Saint's oval sedge, which are a little bit less aggressive species. Right. Don't listen to me. Okay. Thank you. You're good? Yep. Otherwise, fine. It's a good project. Okay. Nick, I'm just curious. You just said that you guys mix everything yourself. So you you uh, deliberately put some switchgrass in. What is the, the purpose of that? If so, um, we have kind of refined our seed mixes down to kind of three mixes, coastal bank mix, native meadow mix, and I believe one that's called Plymouth Bay mix. And they each have a little different percentages of mostly the same things. Um, Whereas, you know, the, the coastal bank mix, we're looking for that, um, you know, super kind of super fibrous root system and very stable um, to really stabilize things, which switchgrass does an amazing job at. Whereas in the native okay. metals, um, 
where it's typically, you know, over the crest of the bank. We try to exclude that where it's not quite as important um, or the areas aren't quite as vulnerable to that erosion. Um, so you know, we buy all the seed as individual species and mix it um, by weight, by percentage per species. Um, so like uh, Lauren just said and clarified the um, the native mix that we're using on this particular site does exclude switchgrass. That was my mistake. No, I was just looking for the what's the value of it, and you just oh. explained that. So thank you. So the, the as root. yeah, I mean the value of switchgrass, in my opinion, is kind of twofold. One is it you know or threefold, I guess. It provides you know forage and um, seed for browse. Um, it provides an excellent source of erosion control and stabilization. And at the same time, those tall meadow grasses during the winter, when you get snow or ice, they do lay over and create cavities underneath for, um, and create kind of winter habitat during those seasons. And I think those are kind of the most valuable attributes of, uh, of switchgrass in particular. Got it. Thank you. Kevin. No questions, Mr. Chandler, thank you. All right, Steve. Thank you, I don't have any questions. All right. Jen, is there anything in the public chat function, please? Nothing in the public chat pertaining to this project, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. No, I'll make a motion to close uh, the hearing and take a revise, it over. We need a revised plan, Betsy. Oh, oh so they're gonna have to come back. Yeah. Can I actually make a couple of clarifications first? Um, so to circle yes. back on the area of wood chips, that buffer, um, there's no existing shrubs in that area. There's actually sort of like a mulch buffer there already that's two feet wide. And usually we don't propose to demarcate the edge that way, but it was a request of the client just because it's already there. And he'd like to maintain it just because it's easier to mow up to the edge like that and maintain the separation between those two areas. So there's no shrubs going there or growing there right now. We would just be kind of keeping the existing condition the way that it is right now. And then um, the other more so question that I wanted to ask is if the on-center spacing of the plants would be a requirement for any revised plants. Um, I understand that there are some previous mitigation plantings on this site, but um, those permits have expired at this point. So the permit that's in, or this project that's in front of you now is more of a restoration project. Um, so I think if it boiled down to it, the client wouldn't be interested in doing the restoration work if it meant, you know, significantly increasing the number of plantings going in. So that's just a consideration. It's something that we could run by the client, but it's um, based on conversations. I um, am not sure that it's something he'd want to move forward with. So I just wanted to throw that out there as well. Your client doesn't have to move forward with the restoration project. Right, right. I just wanted to put that out there. Mm -hmm. that, you know, we, un we understand, <laughs> but the yeah. board has to understand that some of these plantings were required mitigation and they were required to be maintained in their, you know, in good health, in perpetuity. Um, so, but that's for the board to decide. Do you want to see a change in plan board or are you fine with their spacing? Uh, Alyssa, how many plants difference would it be? Do we know? Um, just using the 5,800 number, um, yep. a five to six foot spacing, I think was in the like 290 range or something high, higher 200s. Um, and they have and 219? Then, yes, it was, maybe it was in the 250s. It, it was definitely more more plants would be required. Um, one thing to consider is the entire backyard, except for a small section, were all required plantings. And back then, even though those permits are lapsed, they had specific planting requirements. Mm -hmm. And the board typically requires restoration at least four or five feet, not usually six. Um, and there's a lot of filler bearberry going in. So adding more plants is should be a requirement. So Jen, for clarification, if, if they didn't want to go forward with the restoration, they still have to fix the mitigation, correct? 
or is the medication adequate as it is? Well, it's all invasives now. I mean, it was never maintained as it should gotcha. have been. So it's all That's invasives. All. So, or yeah. mostly invasives. I think, Nick, you said 90% invasive. Nick, you're on you're mute, mute. Sorry. I had said that those particular species made up 90 to 95% of the invasives there. I didn't. Oh, okay. Um, okay. We'd have to take, uh, <clears throat> Lauren and I would have to do a takeoff for percentage invasive versus native. Hmm. Uh, if I could just make one more clarification. So on the plan, there's sort of like a stipple hatch or like a dot hatch, and that's the 5,800 square feet. So the existing colonies that we marked as, you know, existing beach plum and existing bayberry, that's not part of that square footage. So Lauren, you're saying the dots are part of that 5,800 square feet of invaded, right? Yeah, that's correct. And then, but that dot it area is where you have your two foot mulch path, which you just said was not planted with shrubs already. Uh, that's correct. I would have to adjust the representation of that so that that, that hatch wouldn't be in there anymore. Hmm. Another revision. Okay. Um, again, I'm going to echo Alyssa's concerns. We do have a lot of filler bearberry going in and with the grasses going in, I'm not quite sure how that's going to work. Um, again, these plantings were required mitigation for uh, former um work on the property and therefore should at least reflect a tighter spacing than six five to six feet so i i will say that um i i did i used the planting calculator just now for 5800 square feet a uh the plant count is uh 232 and i know that we have 219 but we also include like you said 103 bearberry in addition to all the um perennial and forb species that are included um just something to consider and that you know doesn't also also doesn't include the the two trees that are included on the plan which mm -hmm. obviously will take up more room than an eight by eight square foot area eventually mm -hmm. um and bearberry isn't usually a, a chosen mitigation plant for Falmouth. Um, and um, you said you have how many shrubs right now, Nick? 219. 219. So if really your client is going to push back over planting, as you just said, 13 additional shrubs. I mean. Yeah, we. I mean, we can cert what, what we'll do is um, we can have that conversation and uh, I take a look at the actual square footages, make sure that we're counting all the areas as we kind of want them to be counted versus, um, you know, and, and come up with that percentage of invasive versus native um, so that we have a little bit uh, more clear picture of if 30% if of it, I know it's not 30%, but for example, if 30% of it is native, um, then maybe we are, you know, over the five to six foot on center and, and vice versa. Okay, that's fine. And then shift that Eastern Cedar on that West side. If we were gonna discuss with the client um, changing the on-center spacing, could I ask what on-center spacing we're looking at so I can get an idea of what we'd be asking him for? Thomas has always typically required a very tight spacing, three feet on center. In this case, Alyssa, what were we discussing? Four to five instead of five to six. It's not, it's not that much of a difference, Lauren, but it, it will add some additional shrubs to this to this area. Okay. And I think when we take a look at that, um, hopefully we can, you know, balance what the commission is looking for with, um, potentially what the client is looking for and maybe reduce the bear berry, which are viewed as, um, you know, less valuable ground cover versus larger woody shrubs and hopefully come to a, uh, um, something that uh, is approvable to everybody. Okay. All right, anything else? 
how long do you, would you need Nick and Lauren to revise that plan? Um, oh shoot, I didn't print out. Alyssa, we don't have too many continuances on the eighth, do we? I did not print no, out. I don't think we really have any. Nick, would getting a plan to us next Wednesday be Wednesday be enough time for you, or do you need more? We don't meet the two you mean by the first for the eighth. Yes. I mean, we, unfortunately, we don't meet the two fifteenth or the twenty second because of, we have town meeting. We're not. Mm -hmm. We don't meet during town meeting in case town meeting goes a certain number of days, and yeah. then they never meet the day before Thanksgiving. Right. Yeah. yeah, let's let's shoot for uh, submitting a revised plan on the first, and um, I I don't see why that's going to be a problem. But if something comes up, we'll we'll let you know. Yeah, I mean, that's great. So we'll continue to the 8th. And if something, again, comes up and you're not able to get a hold of your clients or whatever, we'll just continue you out to the end of November. Perfect. All right. So we'll put it for the 8th. Before I make a motion, may I ask a question, Jamie? Absolutely. Or make a statement. And the statement is, these are required mitigation plannings. This is required buffer. And if if the commission chose, and they probably wouldn't because none of them are as cranky as I am tonight, this could go undergo an enforcement order because it's a violation of the conditions that's that's with with you know filed with the deed. So I think requesting uh, the plantings to be what we would normally have for mitigation is not an unreasonable request. Um, I, I would just like to to say one thing in response to that is that we, we know that in order to be able to maintain these either restored areas or mitigation areas, we need either a valid permit or an RDA or, or we need to file an RDA to be able to maintain them. So once and we again, we weren't on this project earlier, but this is just kind of for my own, um, just so I know. Um, when the projects, when we get a certificate of compliance and we are, in theory, no longer allowed to do work out there, if somebody doesn't want to get or doesn't get, for whatever reason, an RDA to be able to keep maintaining the areas, then I, I feel like this is an inevitability. Well, it isn't an, I mean, it happens all over, but I'm just pointing out okay. that the whoever got that initial permit, the conditions were, it would have to be maintained, you know, in perpetuity. And but, if people need it. Yes, you are. You can, you can come, okay. you could probably come for an administrative if you had to pull out some, some vines or something. Okay. So having said, having gotten that off off my chest, I'll make a motion to, to continue this to November 8th. Heard second and an enthusiastic endorsement of, of Betsy's comments. All right. So let's keep a positive twist on this. If, if you need further clarification for the requirements just you know shoot down a call and and or Alyssa and it I mean it sounds like it's it's minimal separation of where we're at so oh yeah let's not Absolutely. make it a you know let's not go into an enforcement let's not do any of that let's just try to get the property correct and and let the homeowner have what they want and to the degree that's practical we get what we want and then everybody's happy you know all right, so we have a motion and a second to continue this until November 8th. Any other questions or comments? Perfect. We're voting for the continuance, Betsy. Gladfeld or I? Courtney. Bird I. Matthews I. Kevin. O'Brien I. Steve. Uh, no. It is unanimous. We have continued this until November 8th. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great night. Thank you. Thank you. All right.
like the next hearing had been previously continued. That brings us to continued requests for a hearing under notice of intent. First one has been previously continued again. Brings us to Mark and Cynthia Albers, 0 Great Bay Street, parcel 46A-15-000-0002. East Falmouth, Mass, for permission to conduct beach nourishment and invasive species management. Jen. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I have Mike Borselli from Falmouth Engineering, Seth Wilkinson from Wilkinson Ecological, and John Ramsey for Sustainable Coastal Solutions here to present their project. Mr. Borselli, you're up, sir. We can't hear you, Mike. And I just unmuted my screen. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members of the commission, for the record, Mike Borselli, I represent the applicant, along with John and Seth. Uh, with your permission, I'll share my screen. Yes, sir. Uh, this is a um, request for notice of intent for a project that you previously issued an order of conditions on. It's um, along Great Bay Street on the western shore of Great Pond. The applicant, um, Mr. and Mrs. Albers, live at 66 Toledo, which is this property. And they're the um, driving force behind what has happened on this eroding coastal bank. Um, Seth Wilkinson and his folks um, installed a coir uh, uh, fiberol array and um, performed invasive uh, management on this coastal bank and planted um, native plantings. It's, in my opinion, not an expert doing extremely well. Um, there's some sections of the coir that have become exposed. Uh, I'm not an expert, but I know that those are supposed to be uh, covered so they don't biodegrade faster than they're supposed to and Seth will correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so the application before you is to basically allow us to maintain the system that is previously approved and been installed. And the maintenance in this case is just um, some sediment nourishment on exposed areas of the coirs. And um, <clears throat> this uh, work is done on land of the town of Falmouth. And we uh, originally, when we filed the first notice of intent and got the original order of conditions, we also got a license from them to allow us to do this work. Um, that, the work also included um, the um, reconstruction of these access stairs over the coastal bank. Um, well, that license is still in place, but um, we had to go back to the Board of Selectmen to get permission to reapply, which we, we got permission um, to be before you to present the plan uh, under this notice of intent. So the project at hand um, is basic um, uh, sediment nourishment of exposed areas of the coir. We uh, recently, uh, very recently, like this week, um, survey located places where it's exposed and show it on here in a cross-hatched uh, manner. Um, the, the staff report was uh, fairly um, straightforward. There was, um, except for this one question, where is the lost sand from the site going to move? Um, so I'm not qualified to answer that question, um, but I am qualified to tell you that um, the uh, volume of sand is uh, nominal. Uh, I did a rough calculation. I think we're looking at 10 to 15 cubic yards at most. And again, Seth will correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and um, there was a comment about uh, the plan calling out new fiber rolls. Well, that was a leftover from the original application. We've since corrected to say existing fiber rolls. Um, I submitted a revised plan uh, very recently. I'm hoping that these minor revisions don't require uh, a continuance unless you have other issues that are uh, more of more concern. And I think that sums it up. I'm going to, I'm here for questions and um, says here if he wants to supplement what I've said. Mr. Wilkinson, you're up, sir. 
Thank you. I, I think Mike did a fine job um, presenting the project and John and I are both both here primarily if there's questions. Um, I, I would agree with Mike also that it's it's been a very successful project. And all I would really say is that um, the, the invasive species management has been very successful. Um, I think this is a, really a, a model coastal bank in, in many respects and um, in, in regard to its plant community. Um, we, what we do see, having, having done this for almost 25 years now, is we do tend to see less sand nourishment being required over time as the, the vegetation continues to colonize the, the coconut fiber rolls. It, it, it does a better job of, of holding um, that sediment in place. And, um, uh, you know, when we do get a, a really major storm, we would expect to do some more nourishment. But we've been seeing this decrease. Um, past nourishments have been as little as... as uh, 60 cubic yards. And I, as, as uh, Mike mentions, um, we're looking at you know, 10 to 20 presently. So um, it's, it's, it's going in the right, right trend where we like to see them go. Um, sediment helps uh, not only limits the photo degradation of coconut fiber, it also um, fosters the colonization of the plants. Uh, the plant will grow in coconut fiber. They prefer to grow in sort of sand coconut fiber matrix, which is the other reason why we, we do the sand nourishment in addition to uh uh, preserving the protected function of, of coastal banks to be uh, sediment sources in, in this instance. So um, that's really all I wanted to, to, to say, and I'm happy to answer questions. Thank you. Mr. Ramsey, have anything you'd like to add at this point? Um, no, I don't think I need to add anything right now. I mean, I did go out and visit the site with Jen, and um, certainly uh, one of the issues that did come up was about the sand transport. Um, we are looking at a, a you know kind of an, a very small amount of material. Um, we did meet with Chuck Martinson as well at the same time, and uh, everybody seemed very positive that this was going kind of in that right direction, as Seth had pointed out, um, with the you know less and less sand being needed, and there wasn't any uh, thought that the the sand is being transported up towards Perch Pond and and any issues related to that. Um, so, but I'm here to answer questions as needed. Thank you, sir. Jen. Yes, Mr. Chairman, thank you. First off, Mike's revised plan, those revisions were requested by the staff. Um, so thank you, Mike, for doing that. And we did uh, say that they could proceed tonight because it is a minor revision. We did ask for those revised, um, those areas to be surveyed, located, um, because we had a little bit of concern with the picture. Um, Seth, that I think you had showed in the original notice of intent was a lot different than what we saw uh, out there. So that's why we wanted clarification on where this sand was going because the picture that you had uh, included in the um, this most recent notice showed a much larger bare areas than we witnessed out there. Um, second, um, we did meet out there. I did meet out there with uh, Chuck and John just to get a better handle on where the sand is going. It's a concern of the towns. Um, you know, we're trying to protect one resource area. What are the impacts to another resource area? Um, so we just wanted to make sure that um, we had some guidance from, from John on, on where the sand is going, if it's going to be impacting Perch Bond. And I think that MES's concerns we're, we're satisfied. Um, so I only have one question, Seth, is I know how you get the sand down there when it's all bare, but how are you gonna get the sand down there now when that bank is pretty vegetated without doing any more damage to the existing vegetation out there? Sure, no, it's a great question. Um, and I would note that we did hear you on the image and when we revised our, our protocol to- uh, Gave us a new September, one. September 11th, we, we updated the image too, just so yeah. everything would be current. Um, so uh, yes, at this at this point, we started to use uh, like, a, like a slippery uh, synthetic tarp uh, in conjunction with some shoots if we need to. So shoots just, a, you know, like a half a pipe and- um, so the sand just just as needed goes into the chute and then usually over a little bit, especially in these steeper banks, it's pretty easy to get that sand to move and we just don't want that to impact. So small volumes, a little bit at a time, um, using using something to convey it over the bank is, is the way we, we get that onto the beach and yep. don't leave it over the bank. 
And are you are you planting any more more grasses down there or no? Are you just going to let it naturally colonize? Yeah, we found that the, uh, especially with the American beach grass, it's such a good um, sort of stoloniferous plant spreads through the rhizomes. And so uh, it will, it will grow as long as the conditions are right, which means sand are in place and it's not, the sand isn't moving uh, frequently in response to storms. As long as that sand's there, the, the existing established colony of beach grass will grow far faster than anything we can, we can plant. Okay. The bigger root systems. Right. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Bergeron. Uh, I just want to Mike and Seth. Um, I misplaced this till the end of the day today, so I would have updated the staff report to reflect your lovely new photo and your description. So my apologies there, but thank you for explaining. Oh, yeah. No worries. All right. Commissioner comments. Courtney. Um, have there been any major storms since the project was initially done? Um, hmm, define major storm. <laughs> That's the hard well, thing. Well, you know, I'm, obviously hurricane comes to mind, but, you know, a, na a nasty southeaster that, you know, yeah, runs Cornel 50 mile an hour winds and uh, record high tides and all that kind of stuff. In other words, you know, uh, is, is what is what I'm really getting at is what is happening out there do you feel is it a normal attrition or have you guys lucked out and not had a bad storm? So Courtney, I can sort of answer that. And, you know, so if we go back to December 23rd of last year, we yeah. did have that, that uh, southerly storm that did create some high tides overtopped uh, surf drive. Um, yeah, certainly yeah. Had, had some, uh, and, and this has done well, and um, this system's done well and, and it's required, it's going to be requiring this year less sand than it did the previous uh, years. So, I, I mean, it seems to be holding pretty well. Um, but I, I would expect that, you know, that toe to be nipped when you have some storms like that. Yeah, no. And that's what I was, and I, what I was trying to get at is how often you figure you're going to have to come back and talk to us. And um, nobody knows that except the guy upstairs, I guess. <laughs> that's right. I have no other questions. A good project. Thank you. Kevin. No questions, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Okay. Steve? I just wanted to thank the Alberts for sticking in on this project and helping us with our coastal resi resilience. No Good questions. Point. Great comment, Lo. Betsy? Yeah, it's nice. I remember when this project started, and of course, we all say, well, we hope it works, and it's nice to see that it's worked. And as John said, it'll work until something big enough that smashes through it doesn't work. And then we'll go to a plan B. <laughs> I like that. So it's going to work until it doesn't. Yep. Right. It's like my car. But if it, but if it weren't there, if it weren't there, this right. area would have been undercut. Right. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. All right, Jen, is there anything in the public chat function, please? Nothing in the public chat function, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Now I'm going to have a motion to close this hearing and take it under advisement. Third, second. All right, we have a motion and a second to close the hearing. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, we're going to vote on closing the hearing. Betsy. Well, I felt her eye. Third eye. Courtney. Matthews, I. Kevin. O'Brien, I. Steve. Pat and I. It is unanimous. We have closed this hearing. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you, you all. all. Have Thank a good you. Night. Have a good night. Take care. Good night, everybody. We actually closed something? <laughs> we yeah. did. I went out of order. Sorry. <laughs> All right, next up, request to extend an existing order of conditions. Cynthia Tong, G. Su Lee, 75 Madeline Road, East Falmouth, Mass. DEP number 25-4605, request for a six month extension. Jen? Yes, Mr. Chairman, they're at, the applicant is asking for a six month extension. 
Um, the reason is their landscaping and plantings are not fully completed. Um, so they're asking. Uh, recorded. Hang on one second, Mr. Chairman. They're asking a little early. Their their order doesn't expire until the end of uh, January, so they are asking a bit early. They're asking for a um, an extension until July thirteenth of twenty twenty four, so they can complete their plantings in the spring. Okay. Is that do you ever give do we ever give six months? I mean, do we want to yeah. just give them? A year? I mean, just just give them till July thirteenth, twenty twenty four. So moved. For a second. second. Well, second. Excuse me. All right. All right. We have a motion and a second to grant an extension until, correct me on the date, July 13, 2024? Correct. Okay. correct. All right. Any questions or comments? All right. Betsy. Well, I dry. Courtney. Heard I. Matthews, I. Kevin. O'Brien, I. Steve. Pat and I. It is unanimous. We have granted a plus or minus six month extension with a specific date of July 13, 24. Next up, Scott Tynell, 163 Bay Road, North Falmouth, Mass. DEP number 25 4513. Request, request for a one year extension. Jen. Yes, Mr. Chairman, this was to um, install an aquaculture grant over in the Rands Canal area. Um, yep. There was a change in the permitting process of Army Corps, so they got delayed. So the Tenels are requesting a one-year um, extension so they can complete the Army Corps process and then put the put the cages in. Bird shall move. Pat and second. That was a couple of years ago, though, wasn't it? No. They um they had a, a few delays. There was um a DEP appeal. I believe there was a court case. Um, now it's the Army Corps permit. They they've had some legitimate delays. Okay. All right. So the motion and the second on the table is to grant the one year extension. Questions or comments? All right. We're voting on the extension. Betsy. Glad filter dry. Courtney. Bird I. Matthew I. Kevin. O'Brien I. Steve. Patton I. It is unanimous. We have granted a one year extension. Next up, vote orders of conditions. Excuse me. First up, Peter Hussey, Wild Harbor Estates Homeowners Council Trust, Zero Birch Lane, Map and Parcel Number 04 1. Or dash zero 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 dash one nine eight Falmouth Mass. Jen, this is to repair the damaged dune over at Wild Harbors where they were storing all of the um, kayaks and paddle boards. Yeah, so it's pretty straightforward. They're just going to be planting the area with American beach grass. Um, I can say that looking in the aerials. There was a little cedar that was removed. So if the board wants to require a little cedar to be put back, um, we can do that. Um, other than that, it's American beach grass. Okay. Ms. Bergeron. Um, they are already proposing to transplant two cedars from okay. elsewhere Thank on the you. property. Yeah. So if that works. Yeah, they are. You're right. I forgot about that. I was just focusing on my little picture. I saw. I saw the, yeah. I When you said that, I remember seeing the picture too. All right. Anything else anybody wants to see in there? All right. What are you thinking? Make a motion to issue an order of conditions as discussed. Third, second. All right. We have a motion and a second to issue an order of conditions. If there's nothing further, we'll vote. Betsy. Well, that felt awry. Courtney. Third, I. Matthews, I. Kevin. O'Brien, I. Steve. Pat and I. It is unanimous. We have issued an order of conditions. 
Next up, Town of Falmouth, 170 Hatchville Road and 30 Hunky Dory Farm Road, Falmouth, Mass. This is the continuation of the Kunamasset River Restoration Project. It's going to be a restoration order of conditions. Um, and we all have seen the success of the lower river restoration project. So I recommend approval. Excellent. Questions or comments? No. Ms. Bergeron. Uh, my only note is to include the time of year restrictions. Got it. All right. I'd entertain a motion. Um, By anyone? Mind, make a motion to uh, approve the uh, order of petitions. Thank you. Third, second. All right. We have a motion and a second issue in order of conditions. There's nothing further. We'll vote. Betsy. Todd Filter, aye. Courtney. Third, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Steve. And I. It is unanimous. We have issued an order of conditions. Thank you. Next up, Andrew J. and Joanne B. Whitus, 39 Juniper Point Road, Falmouth, Mass. This is Cape and Islands Project. Drawing a blank, except for Doug had to present Alfred Casey. Um, they added a little porch. Yeah, they're adding a little porch, spa, renovating an existing porch into living space. I think they're reconfiguring the driveway, adding a parking area. And adding mitigation. Yeah, mitigation. Yeah. Very straightforward, just a bunch of little porch additions and a little spa. All right, anything anybody want to see in there? No, all the standard Thank you. stuff. I'll, I'll make a motion to issue an order of conditions uh, as discussed. Third, second. All right, we have a motion and a second to issue an order of conditions. If there's nothing further, we'll vote. Betsy. Let filter I. Courtney? Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin? O'Brien, aye. Steve? Pat and I. It is unanimous. We have <laughs> issued an order of conditions. Next up, Melissa McKim, trustee, Nina's Marina Realty Trust, 306 Granton Avenue, Falmouth, Mass. Jen? Yes, this is just to redo some of that mitigation planting along uh, Falmouth in a harbor. They were creating like a little view corridor using lower shrubs. Um, and then kind of shaping it back up. Um, then they were proposing two trees um the only issue i have is the two trees they had originally proposed by the shed which you know would be in like near some exi an, an existing tree so it'd make kind of little grove where they have them now there's a big structure over there um and I just don't know how well they're going to, to do over there. They're kind of shoved over to the side. There's not a lot of room over there if you're looking at the property. So I, from a staff perspective, preferred the prior location um, on the other side of that little stone wall between the shed. It kind of filled in that little grass area. But that is up to the board. Thoughts, Betsy? Well, I have a question about what Jen said. I thought when we first heard this, was Jen here and Alyssa not here? 
I was not here, Alyssa. You were not here. No, that's what I meant. Jen not here, and listen. And as I recall, Alyssa said, and we we agreed, or nobody didn't not not agree that it couldn't be tapered up. That they they corrected that they're not oh, going okay, to I'm shape sorry. it into a gradient anymore. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Gradient. That's the word I was looking for. But we. But they're not doing listen, that. My mistake. Listen. Alyssa nixed it, and, and we agreed. Okay, what about the two trees? They had them on one side, now they're on the other. My only thing is that they have some big outdoor structure over there. I'm like, where are they going to put the trees when there's this huge something, structure? I think it's a swing set. Yeah. They're going to move it to the other side? I mean. Maybe they want right. shade for the, sw for the swings. If your guys are fine with the trees there, I'm fine with it too. It doesn't matter to me. No, I, I'm I'm just saying if it's by a swing set. My only my only question is is does the location of the trees where they are they're proposing them over by the swing swing set does that affect their survivability in any way? Other other than that, does it? Having Probably them there versus not. Some, and so the other question is having them there versus somewhere else um um an issue I guess is is what I'm really saying. I just think they have more room to grow uh where they were proposed before and then they had the existing trees so it was gonna make kind of like a little grove. Now they're just kind of like being shoved into between the house and the fence with the swing set and I just I, I'm not quite sure how they're gonna do over there. Well, well given that it can it can be pretty windy there. So having a little grove was probably better. Okay. Steve. I don't have any problem where the uh, owners wanted it. I don't know where we are exactly, but I think this overall will improve the site. And cedars will probably thrive. Well, if they don't, we... They're not, them. they're service berries. They're not cedars. Oh, service berries. I'm sorry. It's okay. Well, if they don't survive, we they got to put them back somewhere else. Okay. That's fine. Cedar, the service berries can stay. Anything else? All right. Make a motion to issue an order of conditions as discussed. Third, second. All right, we have a motion and a second to issue an order of conditions. Any other questions or comments? All right, we're voting. Betsy. Gladfelter, aye. Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. Brian, aye. Steve. Right, no, aye. It is unanimous. We have issued an order of conditions. Next up. William F. Solomini, Jr., 114 Quaker Road and 0 Quaker Road, map and parcel 14-14-001A-002, Falmouth, Mass. This is the uh, raising of the existing structures out there and rebuilding a house on, uh, on pilings. It is... It's open, it only has a small enclosed area. Um, the, the, the issue I have with this particular project is, again, looking at a site and looking at your mitigation calculations, this, this mitigation is just an exercise on paper. I mean, yes, Tom's got the mitigation, the numbers work, the f survivability of these plants in the field is slim to none. He's, they're all shoved up against enormous stands of invasives. I don't know how, um, 
how we're going to get the, the the dotted trees he has around how they're going to be maintained, watered. I just have concerns and I don't really have a lot of faith that these plantings are going to survive. And again, it's one of these, yes, it looks, it, it works on paper, just like the other project he had with the little grass strips up near the garage door. It works on paper, but it's not practical. It's not realistic to think that these plants are going to survive. I'm just throwing that out there. I mean, yes, we can sit there and say they have to be maintained, but. Well, what do you propose? I mean, it came before us. We didn't yeah. propose. We didn't say they had to propose something different. No, yeah. I'm just telling you. I'll, I'll put yeah. in that they have to be maintained, but. I don't think we can redesign it at this point. Yeah. That's fine. Just going in, in the future when you're going out, you're looking at the sites, kind of keep that in mind. That yes, it may work on paper, but in the field, in you know, reality, it's it, it might be challenging. But I'll I'll put the normal conditions that they have to be maintained in good health and we have to have in this case, probably I'd like to see an annual monitoring report just to make sure they're doing well. Let's do that. So, okay. Uh, for question on that. How long on the monitoring report? Well, I can only require it for the life of the permit coordinator, which is three years. Yeah. I'm wondering if there's some language we can put in there that um, requires them to do that longer. Mm. Well, the life of the permit is three years. No, I understand. We're not going to have any water out there. I mean, you could require some of them to be planted prior to construction, and then they're going to have to bring in a water truck to water them because the water will be disconnected. Um, that that doesn't no. that doesn't bode well. Let's hope whoever moves into it wants to do an invasive restoration plan. Okay. I can probably put in language that monitoring reports have to be done three years after the plants are installed. Okay. So that'll yeah. give us, if they don't do them until the end, that'll give us three years of monitoring reports after the plants okay. are installed. How does and that I would just encourage them to, to keep them going. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's fair because, I mean, we're allowing them, you know, we allow a lot of people not to, you know, they don't have to plant right away. And a lot of people wait till the middle or the end of the permit process. I mean, the uh, yeah, the three years. So it it's just something. I mean, these sites are sometimes really tight. We're 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 shoehorning like very large homes into small sites. Again, just to be mindful when we're out in the field and you're looking at these plans and you're looking at the field conditions, you know what is just think about what the survivability of these the mitigation is going to be um because again it may work on paper but when you're in the field it's 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 a lot different so was that issue brought up during the hearing it was brought up at the last hearing we had yeah we brought it up it was in the staff report it didn't require them to make any revisions no okay so that I'm just getting that that's probably that was our opportunity, I guess. Okay. So I think that the three year monitoring from, from planting is is reasonable. Okay. All right. Anything else? No. All right. Make a motion to issue an order of conditions as discussed. Third second. All right. We have a motion and a second to issue an order of conditions. If there's nothing further. Steve's falling asleep, so we need to get rolling. No, I We're got rolling. something in my eye, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Me too, Steve. Wasn't it? Betsy. I can, I can do well, it. I felt her eye. Courtney. Third eye. Matthew's eye. Kevin. O'Brien eye. Steve. Pat and I. It is unanimous. We have issued an order of conditions. And that's it.
And Ms. Bergeron, you lost the bet. So. By right. five minutes. One motion. Who wants it? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Bird will second. Glad felt her eye. Bird eye. Aye. Aye. Pat and I. Unanimous. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Good night, guys.